All right, this uh, tutorial will help you with the uh, helicopter drop problem. So a couple things we need to, uh, to get set up is we've got our helicopter up here, and it's dropping a package that is going to be in free fall for a certain amount of time. So free fall. And it's going to free fall for a certain distance. So it's got a free fall distance. It's got a free fall time, and during this free fall, it is accelerating at 9.81 meters per second squared. And its initial velocity is zero meters per second when it leaves the helicopter and drops. Then what happens, that's our free fall height, then the parachute deploys. And the parachute deployment is instantaneous, apparently. Um, and it immediately takes whatever velocity it has attained, and now it, free, or now it goes at a constant velocity for the rest of the way. So it slows down instantaneously, which doesn't really happen in real life. It would, the air resistance would go way up, and the, gravi the weight is still acting down. So this would be air resistance. And that would cause you to slow over time. And as you slowed over time, your air resistance would decrease over time. Until eventually those forces come to balance again. And then you're moving with terminal velocity for the rest of the way. They don't do it that way. They just say when the parachute deploys, it then moves with a constant velocity for the rest of the way. They say the velocity is constant. And this would be the deployment. velocity and then this would be the deployment distance that it falls from there and then it's got some time of deployment <coughs> so some of the things that asked for is what's the height that the helicopter is above the ground well that's going to be the deployment or the distance of free fall plus the distance of deployment so if it asks for helicopter height um, it's just those two distances added together um, the equation that governs this is that since it's moving at a constant velocity, it's the distance over the time. So we use this equation for this segment. And this one's a little bit different. This one is 1 half at squared plus v naught t is equal to our distance. However, your initial velocity is zero, so this term is canceled out. I'm not going to go through the derivation of this, but just trust me on it. This is your free fall distance, and this is the free fall time that it takes. And if it asks you what's the total time, total time is then equal to the free fall time plus deployment time. So these are the main equations that we're looking at. This one here, this one here, this one, and then your helicopter height is equal to deployment distance plus free fall distance. So these are our main equations. So I'm going to go into America's Army. <coughs> then we're going to solve one of the problems that they give us. We'll write down our given information and then see if we can get the right answer. So I'm going to pause my video here and then come back in just a second. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Uh, I don't know if it's recording or not, but we're going to go into Parachute Drop and select that. I don't know if this is actually recording. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if it's actually recording here. Okay, so I can't actually um, play the America's Army and do the video, so it eats up too much processor or something. Um, so we're just gonna look at one of the problems here. We'll calculate the values and then we'll go back into the America's Army and test them and see if they work. So we've got a few things that it gives us. Uh, so it gives us our free fall distance, that's DFF, and it tells us that it's going to free fall for 78.48 meters. Uh, we know the deploy height, so the distance of deployment is equal to 89.00 meters. 
and it's deploy velocity. So that's velocity of deployment is equal to 5.00 meters per second. And we want to find the helicopter height. We want to find the free fall time. And we want to find the total time. So I've written all these down. Here's our information. <coughs> so this is what we're going to solve for. So if I kind of break it up, these are my D values here. These are my free fall values up here. And then these kind of relate the two together. So I'm going to first look at my deploy uh, distance and my deploy velocity because from those two things, I should be able to find my time of deployment. So that's what I'm going to solve for first. T sub B is equal to deploy distance over deploy velocity. So we've got 89.00 meters over 5.00 meters per second. get 17.8 seconds for that. But that's not one of the answers we want to get. It's going to help us with total time, <coughs> which we'll do in a minute. If we know the distance of free fall and the distance of deployment, we know this and this, so therefore we know the helicopter height, which is D sub H. So we're going to plug this in. So helicopter height, D sub H equals DD plus DFF. DD is 89.00 meters plus 78.48 meters. So I've got 167.48 meters. So that is one of my answers. So I'm going to box that in. That is my helicopter height. Now I need to find the free fall time and from the free fall time and the deployment time I can find my total time. So <coughs> because all objects accelerate at the same rate they're going to fall at the same rate. Um, so if I know the distance that I fell and what my acceleration is I can find how long I've been falling. So to solve for t there T is equal to the square root of 2D over A. So again, I multiply both sides by 2, divide by A, and then take the square root. So I get 2D over A, and then take the square root of that. That is my free fall time, and I just need to know free fall distance. So free fall time equals the square root of 2 times 78.48 meters, all over 9.81 meters per second squared. So if I have 2 times 78.48 divided by 9.81, take the square root. And I'll give you a hint. A lot of these free fall times are uh, their whole number of seconds on that. So that's fairly common that it comes out that way. And the velocities for deployment are usually whole number of velocities. Those are a good way kind of to check. Um, I've noticed that just over the years that that's kind of how that works out. So now I have free fall time, which is one of my unknowns, and then now I need total time. So total time is equal to deployment time plus free fall time. So my total time is equal to 17.8 seconds plus 4.00 seconds. So I get 21.8 seconds for that. So I've checked off all my boxes. I'm going to go back into the simulator software, plug those numbers in, and then see if it says correct or not. All right, so I'm back. So I put in those values that we calculated earlier, and you can see that it was correct. Um, it did its free fall, it then deployed, and came safely to rest on the ground. So hopefully that helps. Again, those are the equations <coughs> that you're going to be using. We'll just review them one more time. Um, in free fall, the equation that you're going to be using is the free fall distance is going to be one half a t squared, where t is the free fall time here. Um, during this segment, it's moving with a constant velocity, so the velocity is equal to the distance over time, and those are d's because they're deployment distances and velocities and times. And then we can relate these two distances together to the total height, 
which is the height of the helicopter. So the distance of the helicopter is the deployment distance plus the free fall distance. And then also the time. The total time it takes to drop would be the time of free fall plus the time of deployment. And with those four equations, you should be able to solve for any of those unknown values uh, with the other ones that it gives. So I hope this helps. Um, again, if you have any questions, you can, uh, you can shoot me an email. Have a great day.